Hana. A little bit about me. I uh, work at a company called DPCI, which I had founded in 99. I was the guy who did move the um, AV equipment around to other uh, classes in grade school, which was the best way to get out of class, if you didn't know. And so I found, I, I associated tech with like just some freedom. And in a way, it's true if you think about it. Uh, also, from a content standpoint, I'm a, a pianist. I grew up as a classical pianist, and so I realized I wasn't going to become a professional classical pianist, so I had to come up with a way to, to make a living. Um, and my career has principally been in technology in media, from even before uh, college, because I worked at my dad's company who was in technology. So I basically had a whole career in agencies, then the Times and the Associated Press, and then working at tech agencies to, uh, to implement uh, technologies like DAM and uh, CMS or Drupal. And so at the end of the day, DPCI is a multi-channel technology implementer. So it's how do you take Drupal and implement it in environments that have uh, a huge amount of uh, assets that may be in, uh, print as well as web or digital assets? Uh, how do you deliver the content across channels? Okay. So our focus today, uh, what DAM is, we've got to be able to uh, define that and kind of agree on it along with some terminology. Uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, some of the challenges and changes in the digital asset management landscape, as well as uh, what are the open source DAM alternatives that are out there. I'm actually going to go into some platform as a service uh, opportunities as well. They're working with Drupal now. Um, and then I will... Uh, actually give a sh short demo of one uh, open source dam that works very nicely with Drupal, uh, something that we did for the United Nations, their news division. So, this is a big statement. It's the business practice of codifying usage rules, naming conventions, descriptive properties and procedures for the cre creation, enrichment, management, and delivery of assets. And that's actually, I wrote that. It's not pulled out of a magazine or anything. Uh, it's a lot, but it's business practice. It's not necessarily technology. So at the end of the day, digital asset management doesn't have to be uh, a technological challenge. You could buy technology and fail miserably uh, with digital asset management. So at the end of the day, digital assets are digital files that have some intrinsic value. Examples are right up here. You know, the question is, are scanned documents digital assets? So if you think about a record, like something that you have to capture, if you scan it, uh, typically those types of documents are stored in document management systems. There is a fine line. You could store scanned documents. You could take, let's say, 100-year-old journals, scan them, try to do OCR, and that creates some value, but an employment record, like HR systems, typically don't use digital asset management systems. They use document management platforms and, uh, and quick capture technologies. Are tech files digital assets? They can be, right? You know, as in the case of this gentleman who was at the, you know, the uh, Princeton Press, it's University Press, uh, where there may be a variety of text files that are associated to a, uh, certainly in book publishing, what we've seen is you can have a, a wide variety of assets that have a hierarchy or relationship to each other. So back in the day, those systems that managed those were called enterprise content management systems, which had a whole uh, set of, uh, of rules associated with them. So here's some common use cases. Archive and storage is clearly the bread and butter of most of these damn providers. Um, but it's in service to other platforms, so sort of as a media service to surface up assets across channels like web content management. So being able to find assets to publish them. Example I'm gonna show you later is in the UN news division where they need to take assets that they have to surface up in multiple language sites uh, under different contexts at different times for different articles and so forth. Uh, E-commerce as well, it's a very common use case. Uh, Multi-channel to print mobile and tablet. So if you think about a company that publishes books, journals, magazines like print, you've got to do something about storing those assets, 
Photoshop, Illustrator, and, and whatever, and those assets also have to be kept in sets. They have to have interrelationships. You could have renditions of an asset for web, for print, etc. But you can also have renditions that maybe have uh, or, or versions or, or, or they're edited in some way for a specific output. Commercial presentation. So a good example of that would be like a, a stock house where they're selling uh, assets. CRM. There are, we have had uh, projects where there are, are constituent relationship management systems need assets associated with their, um, their various uh, constituents. And also, and this one's the toughest, is works in progress, where ad agencies are trying to push assets through workflows, uh, where it gets really challenging and we have video assets and trying to get uh, solutions that will help uh, manage that kind of workflow. A lot of the damn systems will fail in that area, or you have to buy a system that specifically deals with those kinds of workflows. Can anybody think of other use cases? Okay, return to that. So here's some common agreed upon functionality for a digital asset management. Again, archive storage, batch import, or upload, or update, first versus severally, individually. If you've got a digital asset management system which requires you to put in an asset at a time, you're not in a good place. Uh, a library management motif. This was something that was extremely accepted 15 years ago. Where you could check out an asset, the original file is locked in the system, you could do an uh, edit, check it back in, and a new version has been put in its place. For various reasons, most of it around the, the complications of managing um, the, the assets uh, within applications like InDesign or Illustrator, the, it's actually quite expensive for, for the vendors to, to offer those kinds of solutions. So it's, you, you'll see that less and less in a digital asset management uh, in the marketplace. There are a few companies that still do that. Uh, rendition management I spoke about in terms of being able to manage all the associations, both uh, peer relationships of assets this is the same asset, but in this format, same as this. There's a parent-child relationship among assets. So those kinds of things, um, obviously configurable permissions and access controls. The paradigms that you need in a digital asset management system uh, emulate whatever you would expect in a normal, uh, you know, your normal systems. Except with a, with a digital asset management system, the asset itself should be enriched. Anything, anybody knows anything about uh, EXIF data or basically embedded metadata, the ability to uh, have an asset that is self-described and so that could be surfaced up and if a dam can actually capture that information, actually have, uh, I, I could show you a very quick interface of what that looks like for those of you that aren't familiar with that, but it's an extremely powerful way of moving uh, assets along with their own uh, attributes. Um, these kinds of things like automated rendering, transcoding, it, this, this is obviously a, a core functionality. Um, connectors to video streaming services, to CDN technology. Uh, years ago, I mean it sounds like, well, really I'm even putting this up here, not more than seven, eight years ago there was not a single uh, platform as a service digital asset management provider in the marketplace today. Now the, the uh, landscape is, is filled with quite a number of solutions. Uh, here's some more. Customizable metadata model, taxonomy man management. Uh, so to be able to have a, a company be able to create uh, their own set of controlled vocabularies, again, those that could be associated with a custom namespace for the ad within the assets themselves uh, is an extremely powerful and, and really required functionality uh, for DAM. So to be able to customize and standardize that, so you could take a standard namespace, like uh, Dublin Core, if anybody's familiar with that, it's a standard way of describing assets. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones out there, IPTC, but to be able to also create your own custom namespace and to enrich an asset with that information is absolutely essential in, uh, in today's uh, management of assets. Um, the ability to read and write embedded metadata. I'll actually show you an example of that uh, in a little bit. 
you know, for, for read and write embedded metadata, we don't know what's going to happen in five, ten years with your, the dam you pick. Let's say you pick an open source solution or proprietary, and I've seen companies go out of business, or, you know, for whatever reason you're dissatisfied with that dam provider, you should be able to get your assets out with appended metadata to that asset. So if you move it to the next system that you choose, you don't have to then rekey in or, or worry about all of that. All of that enriched metadata or embedded metadata is included with the asset. Uh, integration with natural language processing technology. Uh, we see, we, we saw a big drive towards that in uh, like 2008 to 12, 13. I'm not seeing as many requests for that, which surprises me. Uh, delivery options. Ability to push content uh, or assets is, is pretty, uh, pretty important these days, not just be able to search and retrieve through some interface, but to actually be able to push assets in whatever mechanism. Uh, the connectors is key, and we're going to, as we go a little further along in the presentation, we'll talk about uh, pre-created connectors to systems like Drupal. Because um, you could have a great digital asset management system, but if there's no pre-existing module that connects it to, to Drupal, you know, and you have to have that, then you're, you're somewhat limited. So I'll get into a little bit more into that later. Uh, obviously, web service kits, APIs. Web to print, that's not for everybody. You know, but if you, have a, if you are doing projects for, for a, uh, a publisher, this could be uh, pretty crucial. So think about, you know, how would you store a Photoshop file in Drupal? Right? What if you could store that asset within your digital asset management system and Drupal's going to get that asset and it says, okay, I'm getting this in a JPEG version I need for this particular template, but your InDesign workflow says, well, here's the Photoshop file I need uh, to place on my, uh, on my uh, page. Adobe Creative Cloud integration, again, this is relevant to those companies that are doing uh, print or video with uh, Premiere. Workflow is, uh, is a hot button in digital asset management system because the, none of the companies have really gotten it right. Like true workflow has been a, a challenge on that side. Quickly on video management, I didn't hear anybody who's, who's got video, video management ca use cases here, but this is your list, general, keyframe display, thumbnail selection, built-in transcoding, auto transcription and indexing, annotation, tools, drag and drop, and then integration with non-linear editing software, you know, et cetera. A couple more. And generally, dams aren't responsible for your streaming or hosting of the content. They're really you're storing your, your, uh, your raw assets or you're your rendering your assets and then serving them up to those streaming services. Now, as far as common enterprise application integration functionality, you're usually going to get that pre-integrated uh, products by vendors. Uh, so there have been major consolidations in the, uh, the technology space among these mega enterprise software companies where they built the connectors between their, or among their products. They're usually extremely uh, expensive, like these stack sales are expensive and very cumbersome to implement. But uh, in, in the smaller case, you might have, like, certainly in an open source world, we depend upon uh, modules that people have contributed. DPCI created, the company I work for, contributed one in one case to connect Drupal with an open source dam. But there are a few others out there uh, that are pre-created so that you don't have to worry about, you know, doing that integration work yourself. Um, published web services, can't we talk? <laughs> well, let's talk about actually about challenges in the, in the dam space. Uh, the proprietary products are extremely sl slow moving. Those products are typically uh, built in service to a larger offering. So I'll give you an example. Uh, Adobe has a product uh, called AEM. It used to be an independent company called Day Communique. I don't know if anybody knows of this solution, but it's a massive multi-million dollar platform. And so what they did was they have a C CMS they have like a kind of an XML repository or 
you know, then they have a digital asset management system they integrated and, you know, 40 or 50 other things that have been pulled in. So uh, OpenText has their own solution, Hewlett Packard. And so what they did was they, these digital asset management platforms are typically in service to a much larger offering. And the teams around those dams are not as robust because they're kind of viewed as archive systems. We'll leave them there and not necessarily need the full functioning. So there's a little less movement in proprietary products. There was a huge amount of acquisition of products, and so I just kind of talked about that. Um, the costs of dam have gotten out of control. We did a project for uh, University of Michigan two years ago where they were paying $100,000 a year to a, um, a proprietary vendor just for maintenance. So we did their open source dam project in half that amount of money. And so it replaced the costs that they had annually. And yeah, a dam system you could generally modestly replace over the course of, you know, if it's a self-contained system, it's a three, six week, maybe 10 week project. Um, you know, some projects can be a lot more complex, of course, but just standard dam as an archive system is, uh, can be uh, easily replaceable. Um, there's been quality issues. Uh, I would say more so in the dam space than most others because I've been in the content management space and I've done other uh, projects workflow and I've say that digital asset management for some reason or another has that, that category has been real rife with, uh, with stability issues with product. Uh, and then of course when you have a proprietary vendor there's always that mother may I like we know that there's some API that we could call, but the, sometimes the vendor will say, well, no, we, we won't expose that unless you pay some kind of a, uh, a developer fee. And so that's really what pushed us to, uh, to open source many years ago, uh, was we just got tired of asking. Um, the limited options for implementation services, truthfully, there's not a lot of companies that do DAM out there. So for example, if you're, you're looking at it, there's, there's a lot of opportunity uh, in that space I've had. I could do digital asset management projects exclusively all year round. We do a lot of Drupal work, but this is a, it's a ripe uh, area. So some acquisitions, Adobe, I talked about, North Plains, uh, Excel, KKR had uh, took a huge stake in them at 13. This was a long story uh, thing where Artesia was a damn product in Emotion which ended up being a Corbis property, got acquired by OpenText. Media Bin was acquired by Interwoven, which was then acquired by Hewlett Packard. Media Beacon in 15, and then Chuck Walla in 2017. So basically nearly every single one of the proprietary vendors got uh, taken over um, over the last six, seven years. Um, and then new platform as a service solutions started to uh, to come out within that time, uh, which further diluted the opportunity of these on-premise solutions because companies were saying, hey, we will offer a, a, a pass solution to you guys. You don't have to implement this massive, complicated platform. But you know, remember, a lot of these companies, if you look at HP or OpenText or Adobe, they'll come in and they'll sell an entire enterprise agreement. And what'll happen is on that agreement is a line item for this damn software. So the, their sales guy can come in and say, oh, you already own it. So let's just implement it. And you know, you'll have to buy more licenses. So they're already in. So the complications are that these big companies will often say, you know, I'm not gonna be open to doing an open source digital asset management project because we already have this other asset, this, this damn uh, system in, uh, in house. We own the licenses. So there's a few small companies left, but very, very few from a proprietary vendor standpoint. I, I see them going away. You know, the problem with the, the, the loan vendors are they're typically horizontal, meaning they're trying to offer services to education, not-for-profit, government, uh, marketing communications, you know, and on and on. And it's very hard if you're a small company to try to offer use cases or, you know, for all of these different vertical markets. Uh, the development resources are usually very limited as well as support, implementation services, governance. You know, I've seen in a few cases where the, the platforms are also in need of a refresh. So, 
you know, well, I asked the question is where has the entrepreneurial spirit in the damn marketplace gone? So where are developers going? They're going to Drupal? Not necessarily. Or WordPress? Like where are creative developers going? They're not going to the digital asset management space because it's, it's a niche. I find it exciting. It's kind of a cool space. But if you think about like somebody coming in to try to build solutions around that, it's, it's not, you're not going to see thousands or tens of thousands of people working in this space. You'll see maybe hundreds. You know, in my career, I probably know many of the people who are working in the dam development space globally from conferences I've been at or projects I've been involved with. There's not a lot of folks. So, so we talk about open source. 16 years ago, I've been doing this for a long time. 16 years ago, I would be in meetings talking about open source CMS and, and people would laugh. Even 14 years ago, 2006, 7, 8, people would, would, would laugh that we were, we were talking about this thing called Drupal. Uh, and there were other projects at the time. Easy Publish was another one that people were enamored with back then. Joomla had some play back then. But, you know, today it's, it's winning. Open CM, source CMSs can go head to head with pretty much any, uh, any proprietary platform. So my contention is we're 10 years into the open source digital asset management cycle. There is a link I wrote in 2008 about that, where I felt that that was going to uh, where things were going. People were laughing at me. I think there may even be a comment on the website from an owner of a proprietary dam vendor saying that I was full of it. But so we, we are now seeing open source dam projects encroaching on, um, on work group solutions uh, and dam as a media service. And when I think about dam as a media service, again, it's a platform to store assets that can be served up to other technologies like Drupal and so forth. You can implement open source DAM very successfully for, and there are large companies that are doing this now with open source. So an example of some open source digital asset management projects, Intermedia. You can see it's uh, under the lesser GPL. This is Java, NoSQL, XML, Razuna. There's another one that's called Fusion Base, although they're rebuilding their, their, their framework now. Resource Space is a popular one among my staff. We've done some pretty cool work around it. Intermedia is, we've done the most work around, but because Resource Space is PHP and MySQL, the, the, the staff is, is most comfortable there. Uh, and then DSpace, to a, uh, to a lesser extent, um, Fedora Commons, which tend to be in the, more in the library management space. So we're talking about Drupal and, uh, and these open source projects. So DSpace uh, doesn't have a D8 module or Drupal 8 module. It's just D7. It was kind of stranded at beta. Believe it or not, there were 2,570 downloads and 91 sites report usage. That was shocking. So there's 91 institutions that are, are using a module that's at end of life uh, in, um, in D7. So that's an opportunity for a developer, a Drupal developer, to update, because I think the maintainer has left it alone. But it could be this kind of thing where if you're a developer, this could be an onboard ramp for you to upgrade it to Drupal 8, help some of these companies upgrade their, uh, their environment, both for Drupal 8, uh, as well as they're probably left stranded in an old version of DSpace. Intermedia, we've maintained that module. We have it in D7 and D8. There's also an Intermedia 8 and an Intermedia 9, so it's gotten very complex for us. Uh, this was, uh, I think we're up to about 160 sites reporting usage now. We haven't done all those, probably we've done maybe 15 of those. So there's a lot of companies that are just using the module we, we contributed. Um, which is, is great by us. Uh, Rizuna, it's only D7. Yet if you look at scale, only five sites report usage. If one of you are a developer and you're looking for an opportunity, this probably isn't the right one. Resource space is one that I'm really excited about. I don't have the resources to do it, but I really want to connect resource space and Drupal. 
uh, because I, I like what they're doing on that open source project, but it takes a huge amount of work to, uh, to build these things, to do them right, because you've got to build a bi-directional connection between the digital asset management system and Drupal. You have to be able to upload assets from Drupal as well as be able to search for the assets that are in the dam. Fedora Commons is basically the uh, its end of life. There's no connection between Drupal and that anymore, so I don't see that going anywhere. So here's some examples of, of uh, open source dam uh, implementations. WGBH is using Fedora, Robertson, UVA, Cornell. So clearly this is a uh, uh, Fedora has been excess, successful project. Uh, for resource base, we implemented the ESPN Marketing Services uh, implementation, but Oxfam Blue Cross uses that. Johns Hopkins, uh, Duke, and Drexel, Smithsonian all use DSpace. I'm surprised that Smithsonian has not connected it to Drupal because Smithsonian's a heavy Drupal uh, environment. A couple of uh, prod, uh, companies that implemented Razuna, and then for Intermedia, uh, Intermedia non-Drupal, we uh, helped implement that at PR Newswire and American Lawyer Media, but there's dozens and dozens of companies using it there. And then Intermedia, with the Drupal integration, we did that for the New UN News, Island Air, Opposing Views, University of Michigan, and so forth. And uh, we continue to enhance that module, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of it today. Okay, so why integrate DAM with Drupal? Well, I've started out saying, can anybody in this room prove to me if people want to extend Drupal to be a media library, what happens if you have raw native assets? Do you want to store an Illustrator file or Photoshop file you know, and upload it through Drupal? What is Drupal going to do with it? You know, do you want to read uh, you know, the EXIF data or metadata from, from an asset, do you want Drupal to have to do that? Or can you extend or leverage uh, another system that can offload that and serve up the assets as you need them within Drupal? Um, again, asset conversion in high volume environments, you're better off loading off that uh, functionality to your uh, a digital asset management server. Uh, I already mentioned this, Drupal doesn't really address digital rights management or XF integrations. Uh, bulk upload, yeah sure you could build a, like a, a widget or some interface to upload a bunch of assets from Drupal, but then you got to maintain that. Um, I'll actually show you that too, how that would work. Um, just generally things like rendition management, use, usage management, like being able to track where was an asset used. We've had countless customers that say, where is this asset used? If I have to end of life it or embargo it in some way, every single usage has to be addressed. Drupal doesn't do that. Damn systems do. They manage what an asset's been used where. It should be anyway. Where has it been used in print? Where has it been used in web? Principally, where has it been sent out? Uh, you know, maybe outside of a system or if you've delivered it to partners, let's say. Companies that um, work through distribution channels really need that because they have to be able to send messages out saying this asset will expire in 60 days or whatever. And you could build it or you could build anything in Drupal, right? But why would you want to if you already have that kind of capability in a dam? Here's your challenge. We have a very small, small pool of community contributors. I like to do this talk because I always try to inspire. If there's somebody in the room who's a developer, who could get passionate about them. There's so much work to be done there. There's so much career opportunity there. It is a little teeny tiny niche. I've been living in that niche for my whole career and I've, it's been phenomenal. It's been really exciting, but there's too few of us. Uh, but the opportunity is there. Uh, the project leaders, uh, they're, they're you know, it's not like Dries or, or Matt Mullenweg. There's, you know, like a project leader, those guys are exceptional. Like Dries Bytard is just an exceptional kind of a, a person. Generally what happens is that this, the open source dam leader is like one person who's like this guru developer and it's really like 80% of the product. And they don't quite necessarily know how to deploy other people around them for contrib. 
So it's that that's a hard thing. It's not they're really good intentioned people, but they're not necessarily leaders of these global empires of uh, of, of projects. Um, here's another example where open source content management projects are trying to tackle the digital asset management themselves. We use media for like 80% of 90% of the stuff we need to do as everybody else in this room does probably as well. But once we tr tip over to the needs of like digital asset management, we immediately tell the customer you really have to think about your, um, you know, like having an archival system connected to your Drupal implementation. Uh, these are most people like, I don't think, like things don't get so sticky around licensing anymore as they used to. I think people used to get confused about what's the difference between GPL or LGPL or afferent GPL, et cetera, et cetera. But that's more for the lawyers to understand uh, what the limitations are. So here's another problem, which I still see in the Drupal community as well, or, or maybe less so, but the heroism or, or the, the worship of the developer uh, is, is great in the damn world. And in my view, the best products are the ones that are created where you can configure. The more you can create a product that becomes configurable, that to me is the, uh, the great achievement of, of any project, any software project, be it open source or proprietary. And there's still a very heavy emphasis on, oh yeah, we can develop that, we can customize that. And I don't know that that's the right way for all of us. I feel like there should be, what's the best thing for this uh, product so that we could create a configurable interface for what that thing is they want. Um, expected responsibility to the project. There's so many companies out there that use open source DAM, they don't contribute. For those of you who've been in the in the in the Drupal community for for years, I don't know all of you, but I know I know uh, George and Dan. Uh, you know, 10, 12, 13, 10 years ago, people would just use Drupal and they wouldn't do anything, or their companies would say, "You may not contribute what we've done to the Drupal community." That's changed. There's more of a obligation people feel to give back, but in the damn community, that's not there. People just use it. They're happy to use it, and they don't contribute, and that that's a severe problem. Um, project forks, that's true with any, you know, or hacks, that's true with any, any open source project. And then, you know, people burn out of their project. So the future of open source, my feeling is I believe that open source is surpassing proprietary dam in real time. It's happening right, right now, 2017, 18. You, you will start to see these solutions surpassing those big, bloated, expensive platforms. Much faster deployments of open source. Uh, the pre-integrations that are going on with open source, they're only going to be as good as the people in this room. You know, I work at a very, very small company. We've done integrations with the Creative Cloud. We've done it with Google Docs. We've done it with MS Office. We've done it with Drupal. Uh, other people have done it with Salesforce and Dropbox and just the more integrations that you make available to everybody else, just the more powerful uh, it becomes. And so it really is going to depend on whether open source developers are going to help uh, innovate and contribute. You know, you can't, you can't count out their proprietary dams. It's very hard to beat the stack sales. People come in and they sell the whole stack and the salespeople are really good at what they do. Um, enterprises still have that one throat to, to choke, right? They, you know, people don't want to risk their careers on an open source project. So, you know, there, there's still that issue in the open source world as well as proprietary with the number of people interested in DAM. So I still feel like this uh, type of technology could be so rocket fueled by more people. Uh, to get involved. But, so that's still slowing down the progress of innovation in, in all uh, areas. Um, you know, some of the vendors are improving their product development solution delivery and support. And pre-integrated solutions are, can, be, can be compelling for, uh, for any company. So let's talk about platform as a service dam in Drupal. So currently, 
Drupal 8 is integrated with WebDAM. It is a Shutterstock company. It's now in stable release. It's unidirectional. That means you can find assets and pull them into Drupal, but you can't upload assets from Drupal to, uh, to WebDAM. I, I know they're, gonna, they're working on that. They'll, they'll probably have that out in the next few months. They have to start. Uh, if you go to that project page uh, on D.O, you'll see that it's branded as Acquia Dam. So technically, is anybody here from Acquia? Technically, Acquia has its own dam solution. It's a, it looks like a white labeled solution, which has this. And I don't know whether uh, Acquia funded the module or if WebDAM funded the module, but that module will work with uh, either the Acquia Dam or WebDAM. Uh, as from my understanding, the only thing I've seen is screenshots. I have some on my laptop, but uh, I don't have access to see this uh, working yet. Although I did see a demo uh, of it from uh, some folks over at, uh, at Acquia. Binder is another uh, solution. They're in stable release as well for V8. It's bi-directional. There's the modules right there. Again, you need an account to be able to, to test this out. So you have to work with a, uh, either someone at Acquia or somebody at WebDAM or Binder to get an account to be able to, uh, to play around with this. Uh, I haven't been able to test either's, either because of it. Um, so, you know, I, I, don't need, I don't expect an answer to this. I'll show you a little demo in a minute. Uh, this is something to think about. Well, we all, we're all thinking about should we make uh, uh, the Drupal media more robust. We had a project with a company where we did, we deployed the Intermedia Embridge module with Drupal, and then they went and integrated Scald, which was a great Drupal 7 media handling uh, collection of modules. Uh, it's only in Drupal 7. The, the maintainers didn't move it to D8. So, but the real question is going to be how are things going to play out with media, media, uh, and you know these integrations. If you can, you know, get the best of both worlds with the media handling in, in the Drupal interface, but they integrate with dams on the back end, that could be very powerful. But I'm a big uh, believer that we shouldn't over-engineer uh, asset management within uh, Drupal. I'm going to show a couple of uh, real quick. Get rid of this. This is an interface of a product called Adobe Bridge. Okay. And I, for those of you that don't know what embedded metadata is, I'm just basically clicking on this asset. It's a UN asset. And you can see that this metadata is already pre-written into the asset. This is publishable, meaning that could render up on a website. In fact, the way XIF is handled, this interface probably has the French translation, the German, the Russian, the Arabic, because the way XIF works is it's a, a set of metadata. So if you ingest an asset into a dam and it parses that, you could surface that up, you know, in terms of c credit, caption, headline, description, whatever field you want, you could surface that up on your site. Or flip that around, let's go to a Drupal site. This is a non-fancy site. Here's an example of a dam. There's just two assets in it right now. Uh, let me show you this guy. He is the uh, Secretary General, Antonio Guterres. And here's some headline information, description, credit, the status is pending. You know there's a wide variety of metadata uh, for this asset. You can see right now there's just an English and a French um, version of that headline. So if there was a French-speaking website that needed that same asset, the journalist who was preparing that page on that site would uh, search for, for an asset, find you know this one, and say, yeah, I want to use that, and then it would surface up that asset. Um, if it was a Russian or Arabic site and the translation didn't exist yet, they would see English. There's another interface that would say, okay, translate that metadata to that language. It would publish it to Drupal and send that metadata back to the dam and to the asset for future reuse. So this is an example of, uh, you know, you could pick 
public domain, you know, there's a wide variety of uh, rights usage. Let's change this to an approved asset. Uh, and I'm not going to remember the name of the asset because it's got some cockamamie name. I'm just going to search under Guterres in Drupal. So let me go over to Drupal. Uh, kind of already have them in there, so I'm going to delete. Let's delete that picture. Uh, and now I'm going to search for the asset. I'll type in his name. I'm just going to search across fields. You could present any field you want. And so this asset right now is housed in the dam, serving it up. Again, if you were on the print side and you were looking for an asset to present within your Woodwing content station or Vuen K4 or whatever system, it should tap into the same thing, but serve up the asset relevant to that uh, channel. So I'm picking this asset. And so you could see what it did was it pulled in the metadata, um, pulled in the French too, but that's just because I, it, it shouldn't for this site because it's an English site, but I, I configured it that way. Um, credit. So I probably made a mistake in mapping the fields, which is why it didn't pull that in. But technically, if there was no information here, this would write back to the asset. So we're going to save that, um, and it's updated, and you'll see that that guy's face is here. Um, let me actually go show you one more thing, and then I'll take questions. Uh, let me edit this asset. Uh, and you can see, basically, you can upload images if you want as well in the old way, where you could do it through, uh, pick it from a, a, a dam. But I'm going to search for an asset. I'll search for this a woman named Marie. Hopefully it's there. No, the asset's not there. So I'm going to upload an asset. Let's upload this of Marie Chartardova. That's the headline. Um, she's the president of the UN Economic Council. I have no idea what that is in French. Description. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. <laughs> Apologies to the French speakers. Yes, I've, we've now offended. Uh, and let me put in the credit. Okay. And so we're going to save that. And so the asset is now uh, associated with that record in Drupal, but it's also going into uh, the dam. And you could see that it's you've got the credit description, you've got the uh, other metadata got pulled in, and so that's now with the asset in perpetuity. And so we'll continually get uh, enriched. Uh, final thing I wanted to show you is, you know, search is, you know, what you'd expect. But uh, if you wanted to add media, this is an example of being able to upload uh, a variety of media collection. You can integrate with Dropbox or Box or just about any uh, thing. You could create data records that assets could eventually get matched to. Um, this isn't really so much about demoing a dam. That could be that's another uh, hour presentation in itself uh, or more to kind of get actually give you demos of different dams, and we could do that another day, but I wanted to just whet your appetite to kind of give you thought about how dams should work, uh, specifically with Drupal. Uh, where I'm really excited, personally, I still love working with Intermedia, and I still want to work with resource space to get them connected to Drupal, because I believe in those open source projects, but I'm really excited uh, about what's going on with, uh, for me, on the, uh, the platform as a service thing because if they get it right, I, you know, like the web dam Drupal integration around Acquia, because we work with Acquia on different projects, that could be very exciting for us to have that whole thing managed within uh, kind of one stack. So uh, that could be interesting for us. I think where it could fail is if we don't get, aren't given control over the configuration. Because some of the past, the past providers like to do the work themselves, which handicaps us from doing the things we do 
really well with respect to configuring for the needs, the workflows, and the metadata models of our customers. So that's it for me. Um, I'll take any questions you have. Yes? So earlier you said that uh, open source is starting to take over the proprietary market. Uh, so immediately we thought to like, the time when Drupal started taking over or vignette. Right? So there were a bunch of vignette installs everywhere and then Drupal was just, Drupal hit the scene and it just wiped the floor clean with a vignette. Uh, what, what's a comparable uh, platform that's in a proprietary platform in this space? Is there anything that compares to that? Or? What's the biggest? Yeah. Well, first, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that open source digital asset managements are cleaning up yet on the proprietary vendors. I, they're not there yet, and part of it is awareness. I think that the uh, when an RFP goes out from a major company, they don't know about open source. Damn. Uh, so for companies that know about the uh, the options, um, the the two pro projects I'm seeing working very well are um, intermedia and resource space. Rizuna is a, has a really nice interface, but because it's, was a, it's an old Cold Fusion framework, again, they're, they're porting it over, so I'm excited for them. But uh, I would say your, your two leaders are resource space and uh, intermedia in that, uh, that kind of an environment. You know, the other thing is the intermedia guys, the, the project lead has started his own hosting business now, as of last year, so he's offering up a platform as a service um, so we'll see where that goes. So, uh, so, so okay, let, let's try, uh, what's, which one, in, intermediate? That's the one with the, with the, pack, with the SaaS or with the platform as a service? Yeah, they just, they're just starting to offer that. And now, is there, what is the, like if I was gonna compare it to you, like a uh, proprietary versus intermediate, like, which ones are like similar to that? Like is Zonzo like that or is like a, well, oh no, you, you you really need to compare like Zonzo with with Widen or Webdam or Pika Nine. Those are co cohort solutions. Intermedia would be compared to more like a Media Beacon, Cumulus, Media Bank. Like those kinds are a little more fully functioning than just an archival system. What's happening with companies like Webdam, which I find exciting, is that they're connecting with other things like brand management. Like uh, there, there's other parts of the stack other than DAM, which I think is making it more like a marketing resource management type of a tool. So it's it's a little bit different than a pure play DAM. Web DAM is just one piece of something bigger that that, that company is offering. So other questions? Do you, does your company work on these other or in these other open source DAM uh, platforms or are you teaming up with vendors who specialize in uh, Well, we're, we're small, so we can't work with all of them, although we over the years have worked with different ones, but our, our focus has been mainly intermedia, some resource space. We are, uh, we've begun working with WebDAM, but there's not much there. They tend to do the work themselves, but we're, we're looking for opportunities to work with them, mainly because of a relationship with Acquia. Uh, it behooves us to do more uh, with with that solution. Um, I'm I'm open to all of them, but again, my my soft spot is in the open source world. So, and how is um, uh, uh, asset management? How how does that does that overlap in the document management systems? Like when we when we started our company, we were looking at Alfresco and dabbled in some other systems at the time and then just never. Great question, yeah. There, there is, because if you look at Alfresco and Nuxio, they were created, they were born from the ECM solutions from the early 2000s like Documentum. And Documentum had a records management, scanning, document management business, but they also built a digital asset management capability. They had actually acquired a company called Bulldog, which they then deprecated that code but they, they bought that thing, which was a classic dam in the early 2000s, got rid of it, built in the functionality. What they did was they took the, the doc base of Documentum, which is managing documents, and then they added third-party tools, whether it was, I don't remember if it was Image Magic or just they added things to do 
uh, transformation of content. They added things to capture metadata from the assets or from other systems. So in a way, they extended their damn capabilities of their document management system. Alfresco and Nuxio both did the same thing. But again, because they're principally open source companies that uh, work off of um, a kind of a, a freemium, premium like support model, they, they, they're, they haven't quite gotten the last I checked to that point where you, you could compare them feature to feature with other dams that are focused just on that. There's no reason why they couldn't do that. It's just, I just gave you a list of 15, 20, what I would see as core competencies of a dam. And if you went down the list with Alfresco or Nuxio, maybe they get to eight to 10 of them, but still it's, it's not the whole way. So, but I think that's a, that's a great question. Anything else? Well, great. Well, thank you guys all for uh, sticking it out. And if you have any questions afterwards, uh, privately, you can come over to me and uh, we'll talk.